Hi, my name is Wangar Nordahl and I'm a captain and instructor on ATAR aircraft. Today I will talk about the technicality related to ATR aircraft with glass cockpit. And that is about the DH MDA selector. The flight crew operating manual, FCOM, doesn't provide much information about how it's used. Therefore, this video. For those of you who are not familiar with the glass cockpit in ATR-42 and 72600, here is a short introduction. The instrument panel is dominated by five display units. The outer left display unit is the primary flight display for the captain, and the outer right display unit is the primary flight display for the first officer. Next to each primary flight display is a panel called the index control panel. ICP. On the top we set the speed target, which is the speed we intend to fly. It can be set manually or automatically by the FMS, the flight management system. And next we have a knob used to adjust the barometric setting for the altimeter. And below we have a double knob labeled DH and MDA. We use it to set the minima for instrument approach. And this is the subject for this video. The inner knob is used to switch between DH and MDA, and the outer knob is used to set the value. DH is the abbreviation for decision height. This function is coupled to the radio altimeter, which measures the distance from the aircraft and down to the ground. MDA means minimum descent altitude. This function is coupled to the barometric altimeter. When you set DH or MDA, you must remember that both pilots must have set the DH MDA selector to the same position. Otherwise, the DH and MDA labels will start to flash on the PFT. In this video, only the captain has selected DH, and it doesn't take long before the labels start to flash. When the first officer also selects DH, the flashing stops. The same procedure applies when setting MDA. During approach, there is an automatic minimums, minimums call when we reach minima. The radio altimeter also triggers automatic calls at 500, 200, 100, 50, 40, 30, 20 and 10 feet. DH is used for ILS CAT 2 and 3 approaches. But since ATR aircraft are not certified for CAT 3 approach, we will only use it for CAT 2. MDA is used for all other approaches. It might be confusing that MDA is used for ILS CAT 1 approach, because MDA is associated with non-precision approaches. The correct label will have been DH slash MDA. But then, it will have been awkward to read the descent checklist, where DHMDA is one of the items. That will sound like DHDA DHA, and that doesn't sound good. Anyway, minima for ILS CAT1 is based on the barometric altimeter, and therefore we use MDA, which is the height above the runway threshold. If you use DH for ILS CAT1 approach, you might get into trouble. The reason is that the radio altimeter shows the altitude above the ground, not above the runway. And the ground ahead of the runway is not always flat. When you fly an ILS CAT 2 approach, the minima is over a defined surface inside the airport perimeter. When you reach minima on an ILS CAT 1 approach, you are outside the airport perimeter. The terrain might be rising or falling. If the terrain is sloping down towards the runway, you will receive the minima call when you are above your actual minima and further away from the runway. This is not dangerous, but might result in a go around in low visibility. If the terrain is sloping up towards the runway, you will receive the minima call when you are below your actual minima, and that can be critical. Remember, 
Nobody has measured the elevation of the terrain outside the airport perimeter with this in mind. Let me show you an example. This is the chart for the ILS approach to runway 22 at Abuja in Nigeria. We are flying on ATS-72, which is in approach category B. The decision altitude is 1,332 feet, or 210 feet above the runway threshold. The MDA has 10 feet increments, so we set MDA to 1,340 feet. That means we will be 218 feet above the runway threshold at minimum. The rate of descent is about 600 feet per minute, or 10 feet per second. Therefore, after passing minima, it should take 1.8 seconds before we reach 200 feet above the runway, right? Okay, let's run the video. Approaching minima. Well, the time is 5.8 seconds, that's a difference of 4 seconds or 40 feet. In other words, you are 40 feet too low. Even when counting for ultimate errors, this is quite a lot. Therefore, we can conclude that if you have used DH to define your minima, the radio ultimate will have triggered a minimum call well below your actual minima. And the reason is that the terrain ahead of the runway, in this case, is sloping upwards. And now let's have a look at the ILS Cat 2 approach for the same runway. The minima is 1239 feet, which corresponds with a decision height of 117 feet. In this case, the radio altimeter will trigger a minimum call when we are inside the airport perimeter. The automatic callouts will sound like this. Approaching minima, 200. Just a reminder, don't fly CAT2 approaches unless you are properly trained and you are current, the aircraft is approved and has no defects affecting the approach performance, and the airport is Category 2 capable. Ok, and that's all for this time. Please support my channel by sharing with your friends and all that. Thank you for watching, have a wonderful day and happy learning!